Today we're talking about one Canadian and one American bioplastic or biopolymer company that might be worth looking at coming up. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, thank you for coming back. Um, hope your 2021 is going great so far. On this channel, I talk about investing and money management, documenting my journey to financial freedom. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Now today I'm talking about two companies, one from the US, one from Canada that are kind of into the same space. Uh, they are what you would call an ESG company. ESG stands for a company that's responsible in the areas of environmental, social, and governance. Now I can do a whole other video on ESG, ESG companies and get into the details of what those really are. Uh, but today we have two companies that are very environmental focused. So I'm going to focus on those. But if you want to hear more about what ESG types of companies kind of go for, leave me a note in the comments. I can do a video about that. So the two companies I'm going to talk about today are aiming to reduce the environmental impact of the products that we use every day, or rather I should say the products that the vendors that we use every day use every day. So this industry is called bioplastics or biopolymers and I'm talking about things like the bottles, the straws, um, cups and packaging that we use um, every day when we're like eating or going to take get takeout food or whatever it is that we're doing. Also, I just really need to vent about paper straws. I mean, I get it, I'm all for being responsible, but man, those things absolutely suck. So I'm excited that these companies are getting in there and solving this paper straw crisis before it really becomes a thing. These are marketed maybe more towards uh, folks that own restaurants or um, or just use plastics all the time. But what these companies do is they're changing the way that we make those plastics to make them more environmentally friendly. I'll get into the details a little bit more because these two companies are a little bit different but kind of overlap in certain areas. So. Let's start with uh, Danimer Scientific. Danimer has recently merged with a SPAC, actually just at the end of 2020, and uh, are now trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker DNMR. So Danimer produces a special type of biodegradable PHA plastic. The, this type of plastic would be high in demand for things like um, bottles and straws and food containers. It has partnerships with um, companies like Pepsi, and Nestle and Walmart. So those are pretty big deals. Now, um, to fill these types of orders, the CEO, Stephen Krosky, actually, um, that's why he went down this, this path of merging with a SPAC. By the way, guys, I probably should define a SPAC as a special purpose acquisition company. These are companies that are basically a blank check and they look to merge with another business and provide um, financial support. I'm working on a video separately to talk about SPACs and how those work. They had a huge year in 2020, but anyway, Let's talk about this now. So Danimer merged with a SPAC called Live Oak Acquisition Company. The company itself has been based out of Georgia. They have a um, factory in Kentucky, which is where they produce most of their plastics. They just started the launch of their um, new plastic two days before COVID. So this company sees a 59% annualized sales growth, which is big, and 140% uh, EBITDA growth through to 2025. The global biopolymer market um, is exceeding $13 billion by 2021. Now, how Danimer does this is it actually produces its plastics from canola oil and introduces a bacteria and collects, I guess, the waste that the bacteria produces is essentially the plastic. So it's kind of like, like bug fat, I guess, basically, is what it makes everything out of. That's kind of what the CEO describes it as in a very simple way. So it's produced sustainably. And what's unique about this is it can actually degrade in water. And um, if you guys know, kind of there's this growing concern about plastics ending up in the ocean. Well, this stuff can actually degrade in the ocean as well. So that is the highest level of biodegradability that you can achieve or can be achieved. So it's a pretty exciting product considering um, Pepsi also is a a small stakeholder in this company and Pepsi's committed to converting all of their food packaging to biodegradable packaging by 2025. So this is going to be something of a trend that we're going to see. So at the time of filming of this video, um, the stock was trading at $24.94. There was a big bump after this merger with the SPACs, but just 
based on the size of the market that this could be, the CEO in a couple of videos that I watched said there's about an $800 billion industry in plastics in total. And they think they can convert about 500 billion of that into the biodegradable plastic that uh, they advertise. So that's pretty huge. And also keep in mind, Danimer owns a little, about 120 or so patents, which is kind of a, what brings a lot of value to that company as well. So. Definitely go check these guys out if you're into kind of the renewable space. Um, I'm gonna be keeping an eye on them. I think this is an industry that will become very important, especially now with uh, you know Biden's government coming in. These types of green initiatives are going to see a lot of support, I think. So um, that's Danimer. Now, let's talk about a Canadian equivalent. There is a company called Good Natured Products. They uh, trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange right now at the filming of this video. They're at about 83 cents. They're projected to be about $1.80 in a year. They're based out of Vancouver, BC and went public in 2015. And going through their website, it's laid out a little bit differently because these guys are definitely um, advertising towards uh, the vendors that use these consumable products. So um, they have over 100 plant-based and food packaging designs, 10 grades of bioplastic roll stock and 30 home and business organizational items like bins uh, with a current product portfolio of 385 products sold to 500 business to business customers. So they offer a lot of different products. A lot of them are at least sustainably made and their food packaging specifically is all compostable and biodegradable as well. They also kind of pride themselves on building um, the product and designing it in such a way to make it better than the petroleum based products too. So uh, they look at it from like an engineering and functionality perspective as well. The CEO is Paul Antonidis. He has held senior roles at Best Buy. Best Buy. Best Buy? He was CEO of Best Buy in Europe and Walmart in Europe where they opened one of the first hyper centers which was what they used to call super centers. So um, the guy's been around, has his experience in leadership for sure. The company itself has had a few acquisitions in the last year including uh, acquiring a company that does thermoforming and extrusion which is another type of plastic production um, and I think that's just to expand their portfolio and give themselves more products to uh, sell. As far as patents, I couldn't really figure out if they held any from their website. I'm assuming that they would, but the website is really uh, showcasing the, the, the number of products that they make rather than how they make them. So it's a little bit of a different uh, approach. Now, while still not profitable, Good Nature is seeing their revenues increasing by 45 to 50% in the last quarter and it continues to climb. And similar to Danimer, they have a good sort of Rolodex of customers that they're working with now, both big and small. So um, they see themselves continuing to grow and providing uh, these products in this kind of new space of, of, of uh, responsible plastics. Now of these two companies, um, I would normally try to see if I would pick one, which one I would go for, but considering they're very new in this space and I could only find one other company based out of the UK that's kind of involved in this type of technology, it's still so new and considering how cheap uh, Good Nature's products is right now, under a dollar for a share, um, it's no harm in holding both. So uh, I would definitely suggest if you're interested in this, go and research both companies check out their websites I'll leave links below to the sources that I used and um, and if you're thinking that this is a good industry to get into I think long term this is something that we're definitely going to see in the next four to five years start to take hold um, I'd be very interested in getting in on it early so that's all I've got on these two companies happy researching until next time you guys have a great week spread the wealth and I'll see you in the next one bye